Fifty. Or actually, good afternoon, everybody. This is the gaming geezer himself, Frank Fry, from Gainesville, Florida, on a lovely January afternoon. It's I think sixty degrees outside, sunny. It's cool. Bit of wind. Yeah. Okay. Now that I've rubbed everybody's noses in the uh, climatology, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What I want to talk about today. We start with something, you know, uh, DBJ's latest video, which is entitled BBTM, Bring Back the Magic. In his case, bring back the magic of playing a first-level character. Now, I'm not going to go and sit here and try to, you know, recreate or recap everything that... He came up with watch the video yourself it's brilliant it's very good what i would like to do is something of an add-in how to bring it in my opinion some of the things that that can help a great deal like he mentions uh with a first level character and he and i both agree first level characters and I'll tell you right now, most of the games I like don't have levels. Uh, some of them do. D&D 5th Edition obviously does. Savage Worlds uses levels. Uh, Hollow Earth Expedition does to a point, but they're, they're hidden. They're camouflaged within the system. So let's go with Dungeons and Dragons. And when I refer to D&D, I'll be referring to the fifth edition. Now, he talks about, you know, even at first level, you're a cut above everybody else. All the other, you know, non-player, all the other non-player characters are all, let's say, the, the non-player characters in the world. You're, you're different. And it was very exciting to hear that. And when you can combine it, like I'm going to, with a, I best would call it semi-historical setting, it can get even better because then it can really, you know, your first level character does become somebody unusual and outstanding in my way of thinking. And I'll give you a quick rundown. Some people have heard me talk about this before. I am developing a world, a D&D &D adventure you know, world called the Kingdom of Norsex, N-O-R-S-E-X, Norsex. It basically is about 10th century Saxon England, pre-conquest. Uh, with some Viking mixed in, and some, of course, magic and fantasy elements. Oh, by the way, Norsex stands for Northern Saxons. Just as in the real world, Wessex, which was an actual kingdom, stood for Western Saxons, Essex for Eastern Saxons, and, of course, Sussex for Southern Saxons. It's funny, they didn't have Northern Saxons. Uh, there was no Norsex in actual history, so I, I cabbaged that one. And, but it will look a lot like uh, 10th century Saxon England. Um, to the north, there is, I believe I'm calling it Strathcona, which are basically... Picts, Celts, whatever. To the west is Cumbria. Those are the Welsh, obviously. And there'll be other things expanding as well. Uh, other parts. But anyway, back to what I, one point I wanted to make. You start off in the kingdom of Norsex. In my world. What you're starting off as you know, when you start off as first level, well, what you, you know, what's your, what are you starting off as? Excuse me. And this is where DBJ's 
Vision comes in and really kicks this into high gear as far as I'm concerned. First of all, mine is a low magic world or limited magic. Magic users are few and far between. And the common run of the mill person is scared to us of them. Um, there is no monotheistic religion. There's no Christianity. It's gone. Uh, in fact, the Abrahamic religions, who knows what happened to them, but it's monotheism and it's gone. Okay. So you have a pantheon of gods and goddesses um, with the with the chief deity being uh, Witan All-Father, um, god of the sun, the sky, uh, his son. Thoriaz. These are some of these are actual names I pulled from my readings in Anglo-Saxon, you know, pre-Christian Anglo-Saxon uh, deities. So you have that. You do have a clerical class that has some abilities. Okay. Like I said, it's it's really low magic. In terms of races really only one you can play human um there are two others but it takes you know you have to roll like one through five on a d20 and those are the elf bloods who have in their background the lords of fairy or the fae or the they're half elves okay and the troll bloods basically half orcs Somewhere there was something, there was a big booger in the wood pile. All right. And if you roll a one through five, you could play one of these. And only elf bloods have the ability to work various kinds of magic. All right. I think that, I hope that gives you just a little bit of it. Oh, yeah. And you're also, there's no plate armor here. There's, you know, none of the later Middle Ages things that you come, the magic artifacts, really. They are extremely few, extremely far, few and far between. And they're quite the challenge. Trust me, when you find, you find a plus two uh, sword of something or other, you know, Vorpal Blade, you've got something. It's something kings would covet in my world. Because it's not just a weapon, it is a symbol of authority. Pretty much like what Tolkien did, you know, Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth. And yeah, that's kind of where I got it from. I freely admit where I drew my sources from. Okay, so how does this help you? Good question. I will answer it. First of all, Start off first level basically means, let's say you're a fighter, and we'll take this all the way through using the fighter character class. Human fighter. Okay. This basically means you're still a relatively young in your first level. What does that mean? You're still a relatively you're still relatively young. You have probably gone ahead and Received some training on the on the uh, whatever village or actually slightly larger stead, as they were called. Well, ours is, I believe, called Wolfstead or Wolfstead. Um, and you're kind of ready to go. You've got that training. Maybe you've got enough to get some armor, but more than likely you've got a tunic and you know trousers, uh, probably a dagger, a spear and a shield. And if you're really lucky, a helmet. This is actually what many of them went out to fight in. You look at the pictures of the Anglo-Saxons, you're still seeing a lot of them. Or the Vikings, chain mail was expensive. It was also heavy. Okay. In order for your first level, and you're looking through your player's guide, player's handbook, go to page uh, 
125. That's my own comp only complaint about the player's handbook is the damn page numbers are too hard to read. Well, I guess for me they are. Here Grandpa is in his trifocals, but and it gives you backgrounds. Now here is where you can really make it work and make yourself a very nifty first level character. Um, the fighter shifts through here. What would you like to be? Uh, he could be perhaps a criminal, a charlatan. You know, they came and they came from all walks, if you will. A folk hero, possibly a member of the lesser feared. That's F Y R D, feared or furred. That was the militia. Okay, Anglo-Saxons used them to great effect. I can use them to great effect in my saga, Dark Ages skirmish game. Excuse me, Viking Age. By the way, as an aside, more and more I don't want to use the term Dark Ages because, quite frankly, they weren't dark. Uh, they were probably that whole term was probably thought up by a bunch of elitist Roman historians who were all PO'd because the empire fell in the West, at least. Okay. Anyway, if you look at entertainer, folk hero offers something. Perhaps you did something when the third was called out. You proved yourself. You had a defining event, perhaps. You know, I mean, they have the deep, they have a list in here of defining events. You could make up your own if you like, oh, but there's plenty here. Um, like number five is I led a militia to fight off an invading army. Okay, and that may be, maybe some Strathconans came down and you were raiding as they are oft times want to do. And you led your village militia, you're one of these guys that grabs it to look at the village first and said, come on boys and girls, you know, which by the way, in Norsex, totally quality. You know, ladies, uh, you know, if the ladies out there want to, you know, play and they say, well, I want to be a uh, warrior. Okay. Works for me. And, you know, whatever you wish to play. So, you know, anyway, you know, you have, you're a folk hero, defining event. You know, who knows what you did, but that's, you work with the defining event. They have suggested characteristics. Um, perhaps again, uh, oh, we have number four, uh, perhaps I have a strong sense of fair play and always try to find the most equitable solution to arguments. Okay. You're going to make an interesting soldier, probably a leader, but you're still probably going to be in the lower classes. That's okay. Uh, probably... A Gaber, that was the lowest, those were the skirmishers, archers, what have you in, in Anglo-Saxon history. So we could, you know, do the same thing there. Possibly, you're possibly a churl. C-E-O-R-L. That's where we get the term churl from, only back then it simply meant warrior, man-at-arms, what have you. Okay. Oh! Page 132, it's Elvis the Hobbit. I got to show you guys this. Oops. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. One's elevens is. Okay, I've had enough. That, that, that artwork cracks me up. Okay. Guild Artisan? We can work that into the Saxon, Anglo-Saxon world without a doubt. If you simply look at the samples of their jewelry, the brooches, the cloth, you know, um, you're, you know, it's there. But let's say you don't want to be an artisan. Now, we're not sure about guild merchants, but it'll work. It can work. Hermit, 
Yeah. That's what you want to be. Maybe somebody comes running through the woods. One that, pro that, that will probably really stand out if you want to be a uh, soldier is the noble, which means you're part of the royal families. Now, the royal families or the reigning families, you would have like, oh, uh, so say the Eorl or Earl. Or Eorl, that's E-O-R-L, that's where Earl comes from. It's the same thing as the Viking Jarl. Okay, so you may, you know, the reigning uh, um, noble might be the Jarl of Wolfstead, or the Jarl of Wolfstead, with thanes as, you know, some of the lesser lights uh, who hold land and such. And, you know, this might really appeal. And again, you know, personality traits. Uh, you know, all sorts of very interesting things. If you look it up, it's pretty interesting. You know, you look them up. But well, once again, this fits in. Again, it makes you a first level person. You could be a first level person. You have all of this. You're the, let's say, you're the daughter of of uh, a thane. Your father is the is the Orl's right hand man. Wow. Okay. You know, you can work it that way, um, depending on what you want to do for ideals, bonds, flaws. You know, um, you don't necessarily have to roll these. You can either, you know, you pick one out of a list, or, you know, or come up with your own. But you're still talking about a first level character. Now suddenly we don't just have a mass of, oh God, this guy really sucko stats, or this this lady's really bad, you know, she's awful. No, now suddenly you have, you know, um, oh Adelaide, uh, daughter of a thane. Um, the Thane's daughter, uh, she comes from some, you know, she's one of the movers and shakers, or her father is. You may be first level, but you got some clout, and you've got something developed. All right, Outlanders? Yeah, that works too. Especially if you want to run a ranger or scout type character. You know, that's sort of a character with a good outdoors background. Sage, that's interesting. Why would you go from being a sage to being a fighter? What happened? Were you perhaps uh, a monk that the uh, Strathconans burned down your monastery, raided it, and or burned your temple or whatever? Something happened somewhere. Like I said, go through this. Let it flow into you. You get all kinds of ideas. But remember, we're still talking about a first level character. But look at what you can do as a first level character. We've already got this, you know, we've got this young woman fighter, Adelaide, uh, Adelaide of Wolfstead. And she's the daughter of one of the Thanes, you know, with one of the warrior chiefs that serves the uh, Earl of Wolfstead. There you go. Yeah. And of course, obviously, you know, we have sailor and soldier. Finally, we hit soldier. Uh, now, this is something that is interesting. This actually, uh, when you get right down to it, really is kind of the. Uh, professional level okay and these are professional level soldiers so you may be talking about somebody who comes from a family who say your father was uh, or possibly still is a huskarl 
or a hearth guard. Basically, you're the personal bodyguards of, say, the Earl, you know, or of his personal bodyguards. So you grew up around soldiers. This is what you know. You know, this is what you know. And urchin. Well, okay. Again, work at how you see it. You're a first level urchin. You, know, you use this as your background. Perhaps you decided to become a soldier um, because you were tired of being an urchin. One of the oldest, if not the oldest motivation for becoming a soldier in the book. My belly's empty. These guys are going to feed me. So I guess I'm going to pick up a spear and tote it. So we've been through this. And as you can see, you're still a first level character in terms of statistics. But boy, look at who you are. You know, you could say, my, I'm first level. I'm a first level fighter. I am Adelaide Thane's daughter. You know, what a... Uh, I'm Adelaide Rolf's daughter. My father is Rolf, one of the thanes of Yorl, of Earl, you know, however you, you, I always like to use the original pronunciations. It makes it sound, it gives a little bit more authentic sound. And, uh, you know, I have this, 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 and this. Suddenly you're somebody. And you may get a group of other play, maybe the other players may all go, hmm, you started this off and I was thinking, how about if we're a retinue or a group of, you know, of, uh, you know, Adelaide Thane's, Thane's daughter and her retinue, her, her friends, her fellow, her companions. Yeah. I mean, you, it can work anyway. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, the Thane's daughter. It can be a lot of, you know, but you start with, you start with, it can be a lot of different things, but start with that background and don't let the idea of being first level put you off the mark. See, my original idea was to have people start at fourth level because, oh, well, then you can choose all these little exotic paths. Then I listened to DBJ and Dan, that man made so much sense. So, this is a video response to DBJ's Bring Back the Magic. And if you work with it, work with your game master, look at the world that he's created or she's created. See how you would fit in that world. Work that background chapter like, you know, a dwarf going after Mithril. And I think you will find a much better and simply it's like dbj points out when you reach those up when you start reaching those those other levels second third fourth which i believe is first tier as they're called there you go you've climbed up but you still have this background and it'll play into that and suddenly um you know adelaide uh rolf's daughter Perhaps someday when she reaches a higher level, she may be the, you know, the daughter, you know, she may, she may be the daughter of a Thane. Suddenly she's elevated. She's a Thane herself. And look at the background. Okay. Like I said, have fun with this. Man, this is exciting. The things you can do. And I want to give a personal thanks to DBJ. Uh, Dabe Brian Jackson, who is one of the most incredibly talented people around. Keep them videos coming, man. It's first rate. Okay, everybody. Until next time, just remember, have fun. Play a game.